In this nugget, you and I get to roll up our sleeves and do some configuration. First, we'll configure a Windows 2012 server and tell it that we want it to be a DHCP server. We'll also configure these services on a Cisco iOS router to act as a DHCP server. And then we'll take a look at how to configure a client to either have a static address or to be a DHCP client. Let's begin. So in a production network, we really wouldn't have to do it on both devices, but I wanted to give you options and show you how to do it on both. So we'll start with a Windows 2012 server. I want to take a look at, first of all, what the IP addresses are. So currently, this computer, the Windows server, is sitting on that 10.1 network. The first two numbers are 10.1. And in our network, that represents the street name for Network A. And the host address of this server on that network is 0.111. So what we'll do is we'll go to Tools, and we'll select from the Tools menu DHCP for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. And here we'll expand the DHCP section under the server. We'll go to IPv4, and currently I've got a couple of scopes. I've got a scope for the 10.44 network and a scope for the 23.1.2 network. And what we want to do is we want to create a new scope for the 10.1 network. So to do that, we'll right click on IPv4. From the drop down, we'll select New Scope. And we're going to walk through the wizard. It wants us to give a friendly name to this scope. We'll call this Net Plus 10.1 because that's the network it's going to represent. We'll click on Next. It's now asking us for the starting address. So let's give it 10.1.0. And let's give it 225. And for an ending address, let's use 10.1.0.250, just as an example. So hopefully we're not going to have a whole bunch of devices in that network that need IP addresses, because with this scope, we're not making a huge amount of IP addresses available. 225 through 250 is 26 individual IP addresses that we're willing to hand out. And for the length here, it's asking regarding the length of our network. I'm going to put in a 16-bit length, which in dotted decimal represents 255.255. And we're going to have a separate nugget just on IP addressing and subnetting. But for now, please know that this means that the first half represents the network and the back half represents the actual host ID or host number on that network. And we'll click on Next. It's asking us if we want to exclude any specific IP addresses in that range. And in our example, I'm not going to exclude any specific IP addresses. It's asking us next, how long do we want the lease to be? By default, it's saying, hey, let's give those IP addresses out for eight days. And for our lab environment, I'm going to change that to zero days and four hours. And that'll be our lease duration for these IP addresses when they're handed out. Next is saying, hey, do you want to configure some really cool DHCP options that you're going to hand out along with these IP addresses like DNS servers and default gateways? I'm going to say, you betcha. Let's click on Next. And it's asking for the default gateway that these clients should use. Let's take a look at our topology just for a moment. If this is going to be the 10.1 network right here, we probably want all these devices, if they need to use a default gateway, to use router one. And currently router one is at the IP address of 0.1. So the full address of router one for this interface 3 slash 0 is 10.1.0.1. So I'm going to specify in the DHCP option that we're now configuring on this server, we're going to specify that the default gateway we're going to hand out is 10.1.0.1. So back at the Windows 2012 DHCP Server Manager, let's put in the default gateway as 10.1.0.1. And we'll click on Add. And then we'll click on Next. It's now asking about DNS. What DNS server do we want to hand out? DNS is Domain Name System, and it's the magic by which a computer can determine the IP address from a name. So, for example, when Bob goes to Google.com, a DNS server is used so that Bob's computer can figure out what the IP address is associated with Google.com. So this Windows server, by default, is putting in its own IP address on a different network. I'm going to remove that. 
and I'm going to add in 8.8.8.8 and click on add. And that is the IP address of a public DNS server from Google. And what the DHCP manager just did, it went out and checked and verified that DNS is working and running on that system. And as a result of that test being successful, it allowed me to add it as an option. So we'll click on next to continue. It's now asking about NetBIOS name resolution. A long, long time ago, in a galaxy far away, we used NetBIOS name resolution. <laughs> uh, we don't need it in our network because everything's going to be resolvable via DNS. But if you need WINS, Windows Internet Name Service, you can include that option as well right here. We'll click on Next. And you want to activate this scope now, and we can click on Yes to go ahead and activate that scope. And then we'll click on Finish. So now we have this scope, this pool of addresses that we can hand out from this DHCP server. And if we wanted to delete or disable the scope, we could right click and we could deactivate it or delete it. And what I'd like to do is because I'm going to set up DHCP again <laughs> on another device, I don't want to have two DHCP servers competing to hand out IP addresses. So on this Windows 2012 server, I'm actually going to deactivate this scope and I'll click on yes to confirm. So the scope for the 10.1 network is no longer active right now on this DHCP server. So we created the scope here on this server. We deactivated it because I want to share with you how we can configure DHCP services on a router. For our example, router one will be running Cisco's iOS version 15.x software. So we're now sitting at the command line for the Cisco iOS router called router1. And we're going to go into configuration mode by typing in the command configure space terminal. And that gives us the ability to start configuring the details regarding this router. The first thing I'd like to do is create a scope. Now they don't call it a scope on a Cisco router, they call it a pool. And the syntax is IP DHCP pool and we're going to name it. We'll call ours our-dhcp-scope just to make sure we're clear what this is. Then for this scope we're going to specify what network range we're going to hand out IP addresses from with the syntax network 10.1.00 space 255.255.0.0 and for the time being please just know that the 255.255.0.0 means that the first half of the IP address represents the network and the back half is going to represent the host addressing for that network. Sort of like a street name on the left and a house number on the right. If we're going to hand out a default router to these DHCP clients, the syntax on a Cisco iOS router is default dash router and then the IP address of the router they should use, the client should use, as a default gateway. And the concept of a gateway and router are virtually synonymous. If we want to train our DHCP clients regarding a DNS server that those DHCP clients can use, the syntax on an iOS router would be DNS-server and the IP address of the DNS server we want those clients to use. In this case, we're using 8.8.8.8, .8 which is a DNS server provided by Google. Now currently we're sitting in this DHCP pool configuration mode. If we type in exit, that'll take us back out to the global configuration on this Cisco router. And if we wanted to exclude addresses and tell this router not to hand out, for example, the dot one through dot 99, we could do that with the command IP DHCP excluded dash address the start range of 10.1.0.1 and the end range of 10.1.0.99. So that basically tells this router, please don't hand out any of those IP addresses. Start somewhere above that. Now, those commands that we entered are live and active. However, if we want those same commands to be around when we reboot this router, we need to also save those changes to the startup configuration on this router. And the syntax for that is copy running dash config space startup dash config and that way the next time we reboot those changes will still be there on this router next let's go to the client that will be the dhcp client and let's do two things 
Let's take a look first at how to configure a static IP address, including details such as the default gateway and DNS servers that this computer should use. And then we'll take a look at how we can use DHCP to do dynamic assignment of an IP address to this computer. So currently we're at the desktop of computer two. Now, in order to get to the control panel for the network attributes, there's lots of ways of doing it. We can click on the Windows icon and we can type in control and go to control panel that way. And then from control panel, there's different views that we can use. But if we go down to network and sharing center and then change adapter settings, that's one way of getting to the properties of the network adapter for this Windows computer. Another option would be to right click on the icon in the bottom right, click on open network and sharing center, and then change adapter settings. That also gets us to the exact same place. Now this interface on this Windows 8 computer is currently disabled. Now before we enable it, let's you and I go in and take a look at how to statically configure the IP address and the options such as default gateway and DNS on this computer. And one way of doing that is right clicking on this interface from the drop down menu, selecting properties, and then scrolling down here, I'm gonna disable IPv6 for the moment because we're not using it at the moment. Stay tuned though for additional nuggets in this course on IPv6 because it is coming. But for now, let's go to IPv4 and we can either double click on Internet Protocol version 4 or we can select it and click on Properties. Either way is great. And what it's showing us, and this would be the default behavior, is that it wants to obtain an IP address automatically. And that means use DHCP. It wants to be a DHCP client. And that also goes for the DNS server. So it's going to learn the IP address via DHCP, the default gateway via DHCP, and the DNS server it should use all via DHCP. So if we wanted to configure this statically, we would simply click on the radio button that says use the following IP address, and we could plug in the information. For example, 10.1.0. And let's use 105 as an example. And the subnet mask is going to be 255.255.0.0. And for now, that just represents that the first two numbers in this IP address are the network, and the last two numbers represent the actual host address on that network. Sort of like street number 10.1 and house number 0 0.105. And the default gateway we want this computer to use is 10.1.0.1. .1. Then if we tab down, we can go ahead and put in the preferred DNS server, which I'm gonna put in as Google's DNS server at 8.8.8.8. .8 so we have statically configured, or at least we will once we click on OK, we've statically configured the IP address with this associated mask, the default gateway this computer should use, as well as the DNS server it should use. And we'll click on OK. And we'll click on Close. The other thing that would be really important to do would be to enable this interface. So I'll right click on the interface, select enable from the drop down, and now we should be good to go. So if we bring up a command prompt, I'm going to click on the Windows icon, type in CMD, press enter, that brings up a command prompt. Let's do a ping, which is an acronym for Packet Internet Groper, but we all just call it ping, a great way to verify basic connectivity. And we'll test that connectivity out to www.google.com and press enter. And that reply coming back does two things for us. Number one, it helps us to confirm that the DNS is working because we said google.com, yet we're actually going out to 70.186.10.26. And because we got the traffic there and back, it also implies that our default gateway is working. And so using ping to ping a name is a great way of verifying several aspects of our IP configuration with one simple ping command. So next, let's do this. Let's go ahead and minimize this command prompt for a moment. Let's go back to the properties of Ethernet 0. We'll right click from the drop down. We'll select properties. 
And let's go down to IP version 4 right here and let's change the properties so that we're using dynamic host configuration protocol as a client instead of having a statically configured IP address, default gateway, and DNS. So to configure it for DHCP, we're going to click the radio buttons for obtain IP address automatically and obtain DNS server automatically. And we'll click on OK. Now in the background, what should be happening, there should be a discover that's being issued by this client. There should be an offer from the DHCP server. In our case, that would be our router acting as a DHCP server. The client would send a request saying, yep, yeah, I love it, I'll take it. And then there'd be a final acknowledgement from the DHCP server. And in that acknowledgement, it'll also confirm the options, including the default gateway and DNS server that that client should use. So to verify whether or not this is currently working, let's go back to our command prompt. And we're gonna use the command ipconfig, press enter. And the command ipconfig on a Windows computer will show us the IP address that we currently have, 10.1.0.100. Looks like the first IP address from the pool on the DHCP server, the router. It also has our default gateway of 10.1.0.1. And if we use the up arrow key and use ipconfig space slash all, that will show us additional information above and beyond the basics. So the command on the Windows computer ipconfig space slash all shows us the IP address. It also shows us details regarding the lease, when it was obtained and when it's good till. Here's the default gateway. There's the DHCP server. And here's the DNS server that was handed to us. And we learned about that IP address in the least time and the DNS server and the default gateway all from the DHCP server. Now, what I have not yet told you, but I'm sharing with you now is the fact that I have captured the traffic on this network link between the switches and the router for the intention of using something called a protocol analyzer so we can see the details of what's really happening on the network. And the protocol analyzer we're going to use to look at this captured traffic is called Wireshark. So let's take a look at the traffic that happened on that network segment through the eyes of the protocol analyzer called Wireshark. So here's what I want to share with you. I have done a filter focusing on DHCP. I'd like you to notice that there's a DHCP discover and that's from our Windows 8 client saying, hey, I need to find a DHCP server. There's an offer that was sent from the router acting as a DHCP server. Inside that offer, if we take a look at it and we open up the payload for that packet, you can notice here in this offer, it's offering the IP address of 10.1.0.100, which is the IP address that in the next packet, the request, the client said, that sounds great, I'll take it. And that was followed up by an acknowledgement from the DHCP server. And if we go down to that acknowledgement and scroll up just a little bit, you'll notice that in this acknowledgement it's confirming some of the options. For example, we have the default gateway of 10.1.0.1. We have the domain name server at 8.8.8.8. .8 it's also including information regarding the lease time, which on a Cisco router is a one day lease by default when a router is acting as a DHCP server. So as you continue in your studies, if you're excited and want to learn more about Wireshark and protocol analysis, I've got several courses right here at CBT Nuggets that really dive into protocol analysis. One of them is the CCNA hands-on labs through the eyes of Wireshark and GNS3. And there's another course just on Wireshark. So I'm pointing out those courses to you now so that you know that they exist as resources when you're ready to start studying protocol analysis using Wireshark, which by the way, is a blast. In this nugget, we've discussed and demonstrated how to set up a DHCP server on a Windows platform as well as a Cisco iOS router. We also took a look on the client side at how to statically configure IP addresses as well as train a client to be a DHCP client. I have had a lot of fun in this nugget. I'm so glad that you joined me for it. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.